Life Audio. Psalm 103 starts and ends with the same phrase, praise the Lord, my soul. And that's really what this psalm is. It's a, it's a praise psalm. It's a psalm of David, one of only two in this section of the psalms. And what it does is it lays out for us the reasons why we are to respond in praise to who God is. And there's a variety of reasons for that, but ultimately it's because of his great love. We talked about this love on Monday, this has said, and that word has said, it means so much more than love. It means mercy and kindness and compassion and justice. And so as we look at the psalm today, we again look at this idea of said, and when we learn about how God loves us, the response of our heart is to praise him. I pray that today's episode blesses you. Stay tuned. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Grohl. We are continuing our psalm series, and we are in Psalm 103 today. And we're reading through the psalms, one psalm at a time, as a way to supplement your Bible reading, never to replace it, but to just hopefully supplement it and give it some food for thought for you to ponder on as you reflect on God's Word. If you'd like to go a little bit deeper, I provide journaling prompts for each of these episodes. They, those go out for free on my newsletter on Mondays. You can find that at shehears.org, or you can get all of the back episodes in the guided journaling prompts that we have. Those are found at the resources section where we go through every Psalm all the way up through um, Psalm 100 is what's available so far. And those include the audio devotional, space for journaling, um, the key verse for the day. And again, it's just a really good way to help you get the information from your head to your heart. So I'm going to be reading today from the NIV, and this is a Psalm of David. It's one of only two Psalms of David in this section in book four of the Psalms. This is a praise Psalm, starting at verse one. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he has removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower in the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. But those who keep his with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. And so if you'll notice, the psalm begins and ends with that same phrase, praise the Lord, my soul, because this is essentially a psalm of praise. 
this psalm expresses this feeling of thanksgiving and praise to the Lord because of the benefits and the blessings that he gives to those who accept his commands and promises and who maintain this faithful relationship with him. And one of the keys to this is that we can't forget God's goodness to us or fail to thank him for the blessings that he gives us so generously, especially the blessings through the power of the Holy Spirit. Since the first humans rebelled against God's instructions, the curse of sin and sickness and death has been essentially on the entire human race. It's this broken world that we now live in. But God has provided the means for victory over the consequences for that curse. And what this psalm does is it lists God's benefits for his people. Things like the forgiveness of sins or the healing for diseases and the gifts of spiritual freedom and eternal life. And so forgiveness is the first and most important gift that we can receive from God because that's what restores our relationship with him and it rescues us from spiritual death and destruction. Physical healing is also a part of God's complete blessing to us and it's a benefit available to those who have received forgiveness and have this personal relationship with God but I don't always necessarily think that has to be the case. I've seen so many people come to faith in Christ because of a a healing that they've received. I mean, I've worked in areas where they're not they're they've never heard the gospel before. And because they have seen a miraculous healing, it whets their appetite for the gospel and then they come to faith in Christ. And so this idea of healing, physical healing, is a part of this this benefit and this plan that God has for us. In verse 13 it says, You will rise and have compassion on Zion. And so what this does is it shows us that Psalm 103 is a complement to that verse in Psalm 102. Because to complement that hope as as what it's doing in this psalm is it's projecting the image of Yahweh's love to this community whose sins have pretty much destroyed it. I mean, the lament that we see in Psalm 102 is... It ends with this hope, but then Psalm 103 picks it up and says, okay, this is what that hope is. And so I love that. It, it In the way that the editor of book four of the Psalms placed 103 after 102 is brilliant because he saw that this subject of divine forgiveness as a starting point was the answer to the horrors that Israel had suffered because of that Babylonian exile. This is a psalm of David, like I said before. It's one of only two psalms in in all of book four that are attributed to David. Um, But I think that's why we see some of this familiar language that seems familiar to us because of the way that David prays the Lord in his psalms. Right off the bat, in verse one, praise the Lord my soul. What the psalmist is doing is he's addressing his own body, his own person with this exhortation. And so that word soul is not used in like the Greek concept of soul, but it's referring to the his person. And so in poetry, that word soul is often used in place of the pronoun I. So here it's kind of a synonym to that phrase that we see a lot later throughout the psalm is that my inmost being, that is a synonym to soul. And so that, of course, is including his mind and his heart. So that divine name of Lord, it it occurs 11 times in the psalm. And it also occurs along with the term for covenant in verse 18. And so what that reminds us of is the language of Exodus chapter 34, which is the center of the Mosaic Covenant. And so what Psalm 103 does is it serves as basically a reaffirmation of the covenant. The my inmost being, again, can also mean things like the internal organs. And because it alludes to the body, it's representing the whole person. And verse 2, it talks about his benefits. And um, because these are things that only Yahweh can do, that requires this human response of praise. So when we're talking about like that list that I mentioned, the forgiveness of sins and healing and that complete salvation, um, this personal relationship with God, saving us from eternal, you know, damnation, really a life in hell. Those are all things that only God can do. Those are the benefits. And because only God can do it, the response from us of course, has to be praised. There is no other response. 
I think we're going to take a quick break here. And when we come back, we'll get into the rest of this psalm. Stay tuned. In verse 4, it talks about the pit. And that term is talking about either the netherworld, Sheol, or hell. But it also can represent death itself. And so to redeem someone's life from the pit is to really rescue them from death. And so that metaphor is a redemption. And it's based on this practice that we see throughout the Old Testament. If you remember, I talked about Ruth the other day. If you think about Ruth, Boaz was the kinsman redeemer for Ruth. And so that practice of a kinsman, which is like a family family member, he rescues a relative from slavery or captivity by paying a price. And so that rescue, that redemption there's a price to be paid. I think that shouldn't be lost on us. And then it goes on and it says, crown you with love and compassion. Love and compassion are two attributes of Yahweh that we see echoed. And then if you think back to Exodus 34, which was a defining portrait of God in the Hebrew Bible, that word again, has said has come up over and over again. That word has said, which is like a primary way that God operates. It's a foundational way that God operates. It's an attribute of Yahweh. And it's talking in this case about his mercy, the kind of mercy that pardons our sin, that, that provides a substitution for our sin in Jesus. And so that idea of has said, you can th- go back a couple days um, so on Monday, Psalm 101, I talk about that idea of has said, but that, that is so hard to summarize into one word because it can mean love. It can mean compassion. It can mean mercy. It can mean kindness, but it's that foundational aspect of God's character. And then the crown, it's woven out of love and compassion. And so if we think about a crown being a jewel that is beyond comparison or full of jewels and and worth so much, we think about how much worth there is in the love and the compassion of God. I want to jump down to verse 8. Again, it's talking about being compassionate and gracious. This is a description of the ways of God and The words, again, are drawn from Exodus 34, where Yahweh is giving his self-portrait. And so the, the only difference, which I thought this was interesting, is... In this psalm, he omits that last word of 34, 6, because in Exodus 34, 6, he says abounding in love and faithfulness, or it could be translated truth. So the reason why that's left off is because the psalmist is trying to imply and emphasize Yahweh's love has said that point of compassionate, merciful love. And the focus here is, is that has said that love of God. In verse 10, he does not treat us as our own sins deserve. He doesn't pay us in kind for the way our sins dictate. Instead, he forgives us out of love. And as long as we are pursuing this relationship with him and we recognize him and we have asked him to be the Lord of our lives and we have come to faith in him through through Jesus. We recognize that that Yahweh is a God of love and that even though we all deserve this death, his compassion offers us an alternative way through Jesus. Verses 11 through 13, it, it talks about as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love. What the psalmist is doing here is he's looking at three metaphors that are basically a way to compare the greatness of God and his care for us as his creatures. So he's the creator, we are the creation. So by creature, I mean us as the created part that God has created. And so he talks about the height of the heavens above the earth. And that's how he's measuring God's love, the hesed. The distance between the east and the west is how he's measuring God's forgiveness and the father's pity and compassion for his children. That's how he's measuring the compassion. And neither one of those things can quantify those. They're they're not measurable. And of course, that's the whole point. We don't even have the capability of measuring them. That's how much God loves us. And that's what his compassion looks for, looks like for us. That is... I don't know about you, but for me, that invokes just this sense of praise. Like, wow, God, I don't, I know I don't deserve this, but because of who you are, not because of what I've done or what I haven't done, but because of who you are, that's how you love me. 
if we move on to 14 through 16, there's a lot in here and we could probably spend two or three days on this psalm. Um, so I encourage you to go back and study it. But there's a couple expressions I want to point out. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals are like grass. These are two expressions that essentially talk about how frail human life is. And so that frailty is how we need to recognize how we are in comparison to God. And so if he's saying he remembers that we are dust, he's alluding to Genesis chapter 2. And then humanity's life is like, a, is like grass that withers when the hot wind blows. And we see that throughout the scriptures, different Psalms and in Isaiah. And so he's emphasizing our humanity and he's comparing it to God's eternity because our humanity is temporary. God is eternal. Then in verse 19, it's talking about how his th- throne and his kingdom rules over all. So God's throne and God's kingdom are p- these parallel terms that are, again, referring to God's rule over the whole world. And then we finish up in verses 20 through 22, and it's talking about praising the Lord. And so it's interesting to point this out because that praise the Lord is even including the angels. It talks about the mighty ones who do his bidding and who obey his word. And even, of course, the angels are created beings, but even the angels will respond in praise because of who God is. So given those insights, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read starting again in verse one. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he has removed our transgressions from us as far as compassion as a father has compassion on his children so the lord has compassion on those who fear him for he knows how we were formed he remembers that we are dust the life of mortals is like grass they flourish like a flower of the field the wind blows over it and it's gone and its place remembers it no more but from everlasting to everlasting the lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. God, may the response of our hearts be praise for who you are and what you've done. Lord, as we go through this psalm and we think about primarily about your forgiveness for us and the healing that you offer to us and the gifts that you give us of freedom and eternal life through the power of the Holy Spirit, God, may our response be to praise you as the creator from the creation. God, we praise you. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord, I pray for my friends today that as they're going throughout their day, that you would remind them how much you love them, that they are your children, that you will not forget them, that you will look down on them with compassion. God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you in all things. Amen. Hey friend, do you feel like you need a little bit of one-on-one? I don't know about you, but sometimes when I go through the scriptures or I go through the biblical concepts, I find myself thinking, okay, but how do I actually apply that in my life? Or 
if you've come to this podcast, it's likely because you desire to hear Jesus more clearly, to be confident in what he's saying in your life, the way he's leading you. I want you to know that I offer life coaching and spiritual direction. And while the two are similar, they're also kind of different. Life coaching is when we set goals and and I help hold you accountable and help break those down into bite-sized manageable pieces to help you achieve those goals. But spiritual direction takes it one step further. We invite Jesus into the process. And through spiritual direction, the goal of that really is to help you hear God's voice more clearly. And so there's things that we will do like prayer projects and spiritual gifts testing and a life map and all sorts of things to help you get to a place where you can see this thread of redemption that God has woven throughout your life. And then also to set you up so that you can hear God's voice for yourself. Because ultimately, the reason why I do the the podcast and I write the books and I have all the resources available is because I want you to settle into this place where you are confident in knowing the difference between God's voice, your own voice and the enemy's voice. So if that sounds like something that you would like to do, um, life coaching right now runs about $97 for an hour. And that's for one person. I also have group rates available. And if you want to schedule that, it's if you go to shehears.org, you can go, there's a Calendly link where it says work with me and you can set up a time that works for you. I would count it an honor and a privilege to be able to walk alongside of you in that process. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His.